decades, the American film industry has been seemingly synonymous with Hollywood productions. Until recently, distinguishing between film production and Hollywood itself has proved a difficult task. In the last 10 years, however, cameras have rolled eastward towards a new film juggernaut, Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia politicians have spent previous decades endeavoring to attract a sustainable source of revenue. After experimentation with various forms of marketing and legislation, state administrators are now able to see their ambitions bear fruit. In the years 2016 and 2017, over 320 movies and TV shows were shot in the state of Georgia, primarily in the metro Atlanta area. 17 movies produced in Atlanta between 2016 and 2017 featured in top 100 charts of their respective year. The collaboration of movies and hit TV shows over the two-year span brought in approximately $15 billion in revenue for the state. Some of the most successful films that have been crafted in Atlanta over the past decade include The Avengers Infinity War, Hidden Figures, The Hunger Games Catching Fire, The Fate of the Furious, and All Eyes on Me. Top Atlanta-based television shows encompass mega-hits such as The Walking Dead and Stranger Things. Growth has been rapid, with 2018 marking another year of stunning success. The prospects of the film industry have extended far beyond just Atlanta, altering the identities of towns and cities throughout all corners of Georgia. Rural, undeveloped sectors of the state have witnessed unforeseen benefits as a result of film employment. Areas with no history of innovative ambitions are realizing their compatibility with the film industry and are adjusting accordingly. The unforeseen swiftness with which Georgia has attained success in film has drawn attention from all around the world. Many onlookers are evaluating the industry with the aim to replicate its efficiency in their own domains. Georgia has also attracted the attention and investments of many fame producers and TV personalities, such as Donald Glover and Paula Deen. Unfortunately, not all of the attention on the state has been positive. Georgia is engaging in an internal conflict, struggling to fully rid itself of the injurious and damaging constructs which led to numerous detriments in the past. With Governor-elect Brian Kemp taking office in January 2019, there has been growing concern over the potential passage of certain pieces of legislation. While current Governor Nathan Deal has taken a stand against bills with discriminatory overtones, Kemp has expressed interest in working with state legislatures to craft and pass some very controversial laws regarding the civil rights of minority Georgians. The progressive, forward-thinking film industry has shown no intention in carrying out work in a state that lacks the protection of equality. While Georgians in recent history have taken numerous steps towards establishing a film industry that contributes to progressing the state, the actions of a few politicians may permanently terminate such developments. The coming months will determine whether Georgia Film continues to be a progressive force for change, or if the film boom in the state will be reduced to a short-lived wonder. Early history in Georgia was marked by agriculture, railroads, and discrimination. Georgia and its surrounding conservative states part of a homogeneous South, marred by outdated ideas of white supremacy and deep class divide. In 1864, at the height of the American Civil War, Union General William T. Sherman led a famed march to the sea, waging total war on Georgia. Atlanta and much of the infrastructure throughout Georgia were burned nearly to the ground. When the Confederacy conceded and Reconstruction began, a new Atlanta and a new Georgia rose from the ashes. Throughout Reconstruction, an increasing amount of Georgians adopted a modernistic focus. Ideas of social progression and an emphasis on industry and economic development circulated throughout the state. As various figures such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. fought the outdated ideas which still plague Georgia, the state blossomed economically and socially, earning the title of the Empire State of the South. Georgians had established a foundation to attract business from outside the state, with Atlanta serving as an epicenter. Various industries have carried out projects in Georgia over the last century, but none more than film. Film in Georgia may appear as an overnight success, but the standing of Georgia film can be attributed to years of groundwork and ingenuity.
Movies have been filmed throughout the state since the World War II era, but none left the mark until the 1972 film Deliverance, starring Burt Reynolds. Deliverance was a blockbuster success and proved the production could be a constructive force in the Peach State. After witnessing such an unpredictable success, Governor Jimmy Carter saw the need to establish the commission, which is now known as the Georgia Film, Music, and Digital Entertainment Office. In the first 34 years of the commission, close to 600 movies were produced in Georgia. Following 2007, however, an exponential growth of cinematic and small screen production occurred. 2008, 2009, and 2010 alone resulted in about 700 Georgia productions, taking three years to exceed the amount of productivity in the previous 34. Numerous factors accounted for the sudden growth, but perhaps the most prominent was a piece of tax incentive legislation produced by the Georgia state government. Lee Cuthbert, a location specialist in the film section of the entertainment office, has gathered an apprehensive understanding of the roots of filmmaking in Georgia and the way in which various aspects generated today's successes. Well, there was a first version that passed in 2005, and it proved to be a little bit complicated because it was tiered, meaning it depended on where you shot and how many people, and so it was a little difficult to budget for. So that was revised, and in 2008, the current version of our incentive went into effect. And it's a blanket, um, no matter where in the state you shoot, base amount of 20% and what you spend in Georgia with Georgia companies, you get in back in the form of a tax credit. It's not a rebate, we're not writing a check, it's a credit against Georgia taxes. If you agree to promote the state in one of several ways, um, you can be eligible for what they call a 10% uplift, which would bring your total amount to 30%. Essentially, the tax legislation gives filmmakers the ability to sell a certain portion of their tax credit to either brokers or any variety of persons or corporations that owe the state money. Georgia's system of incentives is somewhat unique, but the practice of crafting legislation in an attempt to allure filmmakers did not originate in Georgia or even in the United States. In the late 1990s, Canada developed an efficient system of tax credit allocation. Canada was extremely successful, convincing numerous American cinematographers to take their business north of the border. Canadian success led to a plummet in the number of motion pictures produced across all states. With the reduced competition, Georgia representatives saw the opportunity to attain a niche in the film industry. Infrastructural bases such as Hartfield Jackson International Airport and the Metro Atlanta Rapid Transit System ensured that Georgia was capable of handling any incoming traffic and helped to make the incentives as tantalizing as they are today. The legislation has not been without controversy, as many identify it as a system of corporate welfare. While the tax incentives do lead to raised rates for citizens in order to make up for the exemption of film industries, the benefits provided by movie making and television production must serve as a standard for comparison. Georgia residents are direct beneficiaries of the film industry in many ways. 28,700 citizens are directly employed by film studios in Georgia. The industry itself accounts for a figure believed to be around 92,000 jobs and $4.6 billion in wages. The meaning of the film industry to Georgia can be quantified in a wide variety of ways, but film also encompasses certain immeasurable boons, such as how the industry is changing the identity of the state on all levels. The prosperity of the film industry has ushered in a new epoch in Georgia. Georgia's investment in the film industry has paid incredible dividends, yielding nothing but returns since 2008. The amount of revenue is the most frequently recorded statistic in terms of benefits of the film industry, and perhaps rightly so. But money going towards the state gross domestic product only scratches the surface of film contributions. The Georgian film industry is a stimulus, reshaping everything it touches. Modifications have been almost exclusively positive, bettering municipalities all over Georgia. Lawrenceville, a rural town in North Georgia, has undergone colossal changes as a direct result of film-related contributions. In the last decade, the city has metamorphosed from a dilapidated town into a modern city. Chris Adams is an attorney who has lived in Lawrenceville for the entirety of his life. He has worked closely with the film industry helping cinematographers to verify that all of their acts meet legal standards. 
Adams has spent years studying the various impacts of film in his city and the state of Georgia and considers himself an expert in the field. Prior to the filming industry happening here in Lawrenceville, I would say that there were sections of downtown that were almost what we would call blighted, abandoned buildings from place to place, which made it difficult on a good successful business, whether it's a restaurant or some other retail type establishment, when the building next door to them on either side has become abandoned and gone into disrepair, the, the windows are boarded up, it's not an attractive place to bring in new customers or new, or new business. The film industry changed a lot of that for downtown Lawrenceville. They needed the set to look a, a certain way. For instance, the building that I own here had an aluminum white siding that was put on in the early 60s and it just looked worse every year. That's not the look that they were going for. They wanted the old-fashioned sort of brick, old hometown sort of feel. One of the shows that they were doing here was Sleepy Hollow. Well, that had to look like it was 17, 1800s type buildings. And that's hard to do when you've got aluminum siding on it. So they tore all of that off, uh, fixed all the old brickwork that was in behind it, put in new awnings, and made this look nicer than it's probably looked since the 20s, 30s, or 40s here in downtown Lawrenceville. So it, it made a giant difference. Because this area was so nice looking, there was an abandoned building next door to me. So local guys here that had a successful restaurant right around the corner bought the building next door, gutted it, and have built one of the nicest little restaurants that you'll go to anywhere in the county. Well, why did they do it? Because downtown was really making a comeback. And why did downtown make a comeback? Because the film industry needed downtown Lawrenceville for film. The effort required of Lawrenceville and its development has been relatively minimal. By simply creating space and allowing filmmakers to operate within their municipal boundaries, Lawrenceville has bettered itself in all ways possible. Besides revenue for the city, economic opportunities have presented themselves in droves for Lawrenceville citizens. Hundreds of jobs have come as a result of the filming influx, with people of all ages, races, and backgrounds having access to occupational opportunities. Despite a troublesome past regarding discrimination and unethical treatment of minorities, the film industry has served to progress social standards in the city. The film industry has displayed the power of a unified society. Increased interactions for all kinds of people have served as a means to limit racial and ethnic divides in Lawrenceville and many other parts of Georgia, especially as compared to other areas of the Southeast. The increases in cohesion are greatly a result of the filming companies themselves. A majority of Georgia-based film companies feature staffs made up of people from other areas of the country. Movie making and television production give companies a medium to bring people together and promote outside progressive values. We have um, developed a really strong network here of creative industry um, decision makers and workers who are really interested in um, living in a community where there's a thriving arts uh, scene, visual arts, um, you know, everything from the festivals to movie festivals to uh, uh, plays and creative uh, visual art and living walls and all that kind of stuff. I think it's all kind of the same thing. These people have moved to Georgia or gone into the film and television production industry because they're creative thinkers and they want creative things to do. And so it really is identifying, um, it's really defining a little bit of uh, the way Atlanta's looking moving forward. Atlanta has long been a southern metropolis and one of the most affluent cities in the world in terms of GDP. Recent social change, however, has begun to form Atlanta into one of the true global cities. Philosophical, idealistic constructs once foreign to the city have entered alongside the creative members of the film industry. Atlanta has always been the ground zero for forward-thinking movements in Georgia, but Atlanta in the present has often featured as a major center for national motions. 
Black Lives Matter, the nationwide movement created in response to the 2012 murder of Trayvon Martin, can attribute much of its fame to Atlantan contributions. Tens of thousands of Atlanta residents identify themselves as active participants in the campaign, and filmmakers in the city creating Black Lives Matter advertisements have been indispensable to publicity. The Georgia Alliance of Social Justice was actually founded in Atlanta by a group of women who wanted to use their platform to condemn President Donald Trump's treatment of women. It is actively collaborating with Putting Film to Work, an up-and-coming training institute that reinforces nonprofits in Georgia with documentaries to support organizing and advocacy. Some Georgians have been outraged by the overlap between social progressivism and cinema. They feel that the two do not belong together, and the film should be a mere source of entertainment that in no way disrupts or challenges the existing state of affairs. Blatant ignorance and irrationality may spawn catastrophe in Georgia. Unfortunately, you have some of the old timers who are very set in their ways. This is the way that we've always done it, and that's the way that we ought to continue doing it. If you don't grow as a society, then sometimes the growth will pass you by and go to the next town or the next county or the next city or the next state. And I don't think that that's something that's a good idea for Atlanta, Georgia. While the film industry has catalyzed Georgia's abandonment of the troubled aspects of its past, certain groups are taking all means necessary to perpetuate class divide. Politicians entrenched in socially conservative ideologies are attempting to restore many traditional Southern aspects of the state. In the 2017-2018 state legislative session, lawmakers worked to pass the bill titled SB 375. The bill, widely regarded by outsiders as a direct infringement of human rights, would have prevented same-sex couples from adopting a child. In the same session, Senate Bill 233 was brought into discussion. SB 233 is described as a religious freedoms bill requiring the government to submit detailed evidence before interfering with any forms of religious undertaking. The underlying motivation of the bill, however, was to enable various religious groups in their attempts to deny same-sex marriage. Consideration of the bills prompted a vehement denunction from various film corporations. Officials like Governor Nathan Deal, who oversaw the legislative session, grew fearful of the potential loss in revenue and worked to successfully terminate each bill. The results of the 2018 gubernatorial election may very well reinstate controversy, however, as radical Republican Brian Kemp achieved victory. Kemp has repeatedly stated his intent to reintroduce SB 375 and to institute other laws disparaging minorities, particularly immigrants and members of the LGBTQ community. I got a big truck, just in case I need to round up criminal illegals and take them home myself. Yep, I just said that. I'm Brian Kemp. If you want a politically incorrect conservative, that's me. Kemp's ideologies have been identified as completely contradictory to the philosophies surrounding the film industry. Functionaries around the state are weighing the likely cost of the bill against its benefits. I understand that people from different political points of view want to try and balance out what one side believes or values politics and the other side says no that's not the values that we're looking for. I will tell you that if that sort of legislation had been passed prior to the film industry coming to Georgia I do not think they would have come here. I think it would have been sort of an overt sign to them you're not welcome. I don't think that's necessarily the intention of the people that are promoting the legislation. They may feel very passionately about their topic, but the unintended consequences that come with it have to be viewed as realistic. And those unintended consequences are real. And I will tell you, I just don't believe that any of that film industry would have come to Georgia if that legislation had been passed initially. Now the question is, with all of the investment that has been put into Georgia from the film industry, if you now pass that type of legislation, will they pack up and leave? I don't know. I hope not. But whoever is sponsoring this legislation better have their eyes wide open and realize this is a major industry that we've got in the state of Georgia right now. 
and you're in danger of having that industry leave. I would suspect that this is something that we need to have a lot of compromise and thought go into before any new legislation is proposed, much less passed. The progressive tendency of members of the film industry have historically led to a stern resistance of discrimination. Current contributors to Georgia, including Pinewood Studios and Third Rail Studios, have threatened to transfer their operations to other areas of the country in the event that discriminatory legislation is in fact passed. Fundamentally, film serves as an expression of the human condition. As filmmakers and their contemporaries perform their art, they convey ideals and archetypes which apply to all men and women, discarding demographic backgrounds. An environment of hate and divide impedes filmmakers in their attempts of expression. Georgia's access to the film industry is ultimately a privilege, and other states like Louisiana have expressed interest in seizing cinematic opportunities for themselves. A potential migration of film away from Georgia would be remarkably devastating, eliminating more than just revenue in the state. Many of the functions which now shape the identity of Georgia may be stripped away. The Atlanta Film Festival is an annual celebration of international film held in Georgia's capital. Founded in 1976, the festival displays a variety of independent films of numerous genres. It has hosted several short films and narratives that have qualified for Academy Awards, with 2002 picture The Accountant winning the award for Best Live Action Short Film. The Atlanta Film Festival attempts to represent the interests of various groups, especially those with a history of being underrepresented in the state of Georgia. The festival has experimented with a number of means dedicated towards inducing the expression of progressive ideologies. Prior to 2008, the Out on Film Gay Film Festival was produced in collaboration with the Atlanta Film Festival. However, the Atlanta Film Festival organization gave Out on Film to the LGBTQ community creating an independent event. To compensate, the organization established the Pink Peach Award in 2008, awarded to the best LGBT-based feature film. The Atlanta Film Festival has also created the New Mavericks Block, a committee which gives a prize to a short with a strong female lead. Other film festivals operating in conjunction with the Atlanta Film Festival include the Atlanta Jewish Film Festival and the Atlanta International Documentary Film Festival. The discontinuance of film would hinder the celebration of intellectual ideals and progressivism, preventing Georgia from reaching its potential as one of the most integral states in the Union. Motion pictures have a certain fundamental beauty about them, which is incredibly relevant to contemporary society. They are a symbol of American freedom, allowing writers, producers, and directors to express themselves without any limitation. The beauty of film has been able to flourish with a center in Atlanta and has extended its promise to all corners of the state. The envisionment of a generation of Georgia politicians has only just begun to blossom economically and socially. As the film industry's role in Georgia has continued to progress and evolve, its potential has evidently grown limitless with more studios and executives finding new homes throughout Georgia. The spread of film continues to shape the identity of a new and improved Atlanta as well as a new and improved Georgia. Atlanta, once a city with an alarmingly high poverty rate, has seen a steady reduction in its poor population. Cities such as Lawrenceville have seen similar benefits as film input facilitates their transitions from rural environments into thriving urban communities. Virtually no areas of Georgia have been left untouched by the film industry. By developing an environment in which creative people have the opportunity to grow and contribute their skills to the industry, Georgia is able to transcend existing cultural boundaries. People across the state have seen the promise of what is going on in front of them and have shown eager ambition to get involved. Organizations like the Georgia Film Academy and the Georgia Film, Music, and Digital Entertainment Office employ several hundred Georgians and serve as proficient contributors to the state's growth. Despite recent cohesion between Georgia and the members of the film industry who have immigrated to the state, progress will soon encounter a crossroads. The continuation of success meets one staunch challenge, discrimination. A new wave of social conservatism has emerged in resistance to social advancements. The inclusive environment which film has created has disrupted the southern status quo. Fearful of losing their privileges, 
Certain groups of traditionalists are rallying support in an attempt to suppress the upwards mobility of people within different demographic classifications. Georgians, especially minorities, must prove that true minorities in the state are the ones who discriminate and lack open-mindedness. Georgia as a whole must decide whether it is willing to wait to buy a multi-billion dollar industry for the sake of an infringement on the basic civil rights of thousands of people within the state.